Do you ever find yourself in hopeless situations where no matter how you think about it, you can't see how this is going to work out and you feel hopeless to do anything about it? I hate those situations. I want to at least be able to do something about it, but I'm helpless to do anything about it and the situation looks hopeless. What do you do? What do you do when you're losing hope? You go to the God of all hope. I want to encourage you today, no matter what it is you're facing, God is the God of all hope. He can work it out for His glory and for your growth. What is hope? Hope is a confident expectation that God's going to work it out, that God's able to work it out, and God will. And you've got to have hope. Proverbs 13, 12 says that, that the heart it grows sick when hope is taken away. When you lose your hope, you, you lose your life. You lose your meaning, your purpose, your power, your impact. you got to have hope. Where do you get it? You get it from the God of all hope. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope, or all hope in some translations, fill you with all joy and all peace. That, that, those are the byproducts of hope. You, you, you walk in joy. You walk in peace. In believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a supernatural uh, gift that comes from God when you believe, when you trust in Him. You get it by believing in Him. Now, Jeremiah was a, called the weeping prophet. He was a prophet in Israel at a terrible time. Israel had been sinning and idolatry and immorality and wickedness and, and play religion and false religion. And God had enough of it, so he let their enemies defeat them and take them captive. Well, Jeremiah, his heart is broken. He's being persecuted because of the, the, the power of his words, his message, calling them to repent. And he writes two words about hope that, that really encourage my heart. One is Jeremiah 29, 11. He's, he's realizing after all this, God says, it says, God declares, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I love those words. I pray this prayer every day that God would give us hope and a future. Well, how do we experience that? Well, hope is a, is a, um, it's a noun. It's something you receive. God has a hope and a future for you. It's something you receive, but it's also something you do. You got to get there by believing. Lamentations. The word lament means to mourn, to grieve, to sorrow. He wrote a book called Sorrows. Think about it. And the first three uh, chapters are all about how terrible it is. But then in chapter chapter 3, verse 22, the sun comes out and Jeremiah writes these beautiful words, through the Lord's mercies, we're not consumed because his compassions fail not. They're new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The word is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. He says, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. You've got to wait on him. You've got to hope in him. You've got to rely upon him. You've got to seek him. You get this hope. It fills your heart by believing. I want to encourage you today, whatever it is that looks hopeless to you, trust God with it. Give it to God, trust Him, trust Him in prayer, and experience the hope that can only come from the God of all hope.